what's up everybody welcome to another video my name is joshua and this is going to be the first video of a series which is going to be showing you how to edit images in lightroom so this first video i'm going to be talking about the exposure and getting your exposure right in the editing process now when taking pictures you should try your possible best to ensure that your images are well exposed but we cannot always have that sometimes this the area is just so difficult to work with that we have to expose for specific areas meaning the other parts of the images are not going to be well exposed but today i'm going to be showing you how to edit your images and bring that light back to where it's supposed to be so we are going to be starting with the hardest one i feel it should be this one over here because it was actually dark and yeah so let's start with this image and let's jump over to the develop tab so here we are in the develop tab and straight away we can see that boy we are greeted with a lot of options we have the basic we have the tone curve hsl slash color split toning and yeah you can read the remaining <laughs> but when we open an image for the first time in lightroom we are greeted with all these panels what do all these things mean Presets, as the name implies, is where all your presets are stored. Lightroom has blessed us with some of their own presets, which I've never used. These are my presets. Footwear presets I just made for shoes. I was working with a brand. Then portraits presets I used. But this is supposed to be under portrait. I don't know why it's under exact. <laughs> but that's just on the way. Snapshots. So basically, after, when you edit and you get to a point that you like the image, but you still want to keep working, but at the same time, you don't want a situation where you've forgotten how the image looked at a particular point, you can create a snapshot. Meaning, let's say we've adjusted the, um, everything like this. Uh, let's assume we like this image. <laughs> you can click on this plus B to add the snapshot, create, and it stores that snapshot there. So even though we've adjusted so many things and everything is looking different and stuff like that and the history is just increasing and increasing. By the way, history shows you all the things you've done to that image since you imported it. And we've gone so far in this that we've forgotten how it looked at that point where we liked it. And so of us going down, going to check each of them to preview which one is good. Where was the one that I liked? I just click on snapshot and it takes us back. Voila! Magic. You delete that, press the minus key. Then we can just clear all the history steps. Let's start afresh. Let's close the preset because I'm not going to be teaching you how to work the preset yet. It's just how to get your exposure right in Lightroom. So this is how the image looks straight. From the camera now the first thing you can probably notice about this image is that it's too dark all across the border everything in this image is dark now that is where the exposure comes in. the exposure is basically the brightness of the image your exposure increases the brightness of everything in the image and I'll explain to you why I'm emphasizing everything when we increase this you notice that everything becomes brighter reduce this everything becomes darker now depending on how we increase some of these things we're going to be noticing that this thing will change this is so elaborate that i'm going to use another video to talk about the tone curve so yeah and i probably should have mentioned this earlier and for those of you that are into photography already that have quite some understanding about this thing <laughs> forgive me if i sound Dude. So I'm trying to use easy words without using as much terminology as possible. So yeah, let's move on. So that was the exposure and that basically makes the image brighter. So you can see before and after. So now thing if you are using the computer, if you just click on the slash B, you can get the before and after. If you are on the phone, the mobile lightroom just holding down on the screen will show you before and after. Now this still looks a bit dark, so I'm going to increase this some more. 
Yeah, that looks better. There's something, something around here. Now, another thing I'm noticing is the contrast. What does this contrast mean? Contrast basically is the difference between the dark parts of the image and the bright parts of the image. Increasing, looking at this, this is going to give you a graphical representation of what I'm talking about. Watch what happens when I increase the contrast. It pushes this place towards the left and it pushes this place towards the right. This area, this area signifies the bright areas of your image and this area signifies the dark area of your image. And what contrast does is it separates them, meaning it's making them more distinct. So basically, the brighter areas will be brighter and the darker areas will be darker, meaning that you have increased the contrast of your image. I mean, in English terms, what does contrast mean? Different. <laughs> so let's take that out because I actually don't want that. From this image, straight away we can tell that the contrast is a little bit high. A little bit especially in these areas right here. So what I do is drop this just a little bit. 27 is okay. So as you can see this image is becoming a lot more visible than it was before. You can see his eyes well, you can see his hair, which we couldn't even see before. And that's basically contrast. Now let's deal with highlights. What does highlight mean? Look at the area of the histogram that is highlighted. Hmm interesting to use words <laughs> look at the area of the histogram that is highlighted that is that area is called highlight and basically what this means is it's going to adjust the bright parts of your image it's not so there's white there's black there's shadow and there's highlight then there's the mid tone which is the middle part of the image the highlights are not pure white but they are basically the bright parts of your image. If there's pure white, that is when this area is going to be affected. But look at what happens when I hover over this light. This area that is affected, which means it's the bright areas in this image that will be affected. So it's going to affect these areas over here. And that is a very interesting thing because now we can adjust this slider without thinking about all these areas. We are just going to adjust this slider and it's only going to affect the bright parts. So, Lightroom has made things easy for us. Now, if I increase this highlight, it's going to make that area brighter. And if I reduce it, it's going to make that area darker. Now, I feel like I want to make that area brighter, so I'm going to bring this more towards the side. So, around 29 is okay. Shadows, very similar to highlights, but it deals with the dark areas of the image. So, the shadows, look at the area of the highlight, that, of the <laughs> histogram that is um highlighted is this area over here this area signifies the dark areas of the image so if i adjust the shadows now i'm going to see that these dark areas will be affected these dark areas will be affected so let's move this around increasing it you can see even this dark side too has been has been affected and we can see everything clearly but if i reduce this it's making everything darker and we are losing some details if I hover over this show shadow clipping, it's showing me the areas of the dark side that have lost detail. Meaning this area has lost some detail. But the way I look at it is whether or not certain areas have lost detail shouldn't be the goal. The goal isn't to create a well-balanced image. The goal is to create an image that you like. An image that is with intention. So basically, I don't mind losing some details in the shadows if i'm able to get a moody image which is what i'm into and i love moody images i love low-key images basically images that are dark and so i feel like i want to drop my shadow but another thing you could do is increase your shadow and play around with your white and black which is what a lot of people do because they don't want to lose the shadow i mean they don't want to lose the details in that dark area so they rather use the white and the black to adjust that but I mean, come on, this slider goes left and right for a reason. It's not just for play. So we should be able to adjust this dark side regardless of what people say. I usually drop the shadows if I want it. I could increase it if I want it. It depends on the image. For this, just for tutorial sake, 
I'm going to increase the shadow and I'll use the white and black to play around with how dark or bright I want the image to be. Now white and black. I could say it's affecting the extreme white and the extreme black. But I'm lying to you. <laughs> it's affecting them, yes. But it's okay, this is how I'll explain them. White, imagine you giving the bright part of your image steroids. Every property that this pixel, that this area of your image has, is going to be enhanced. So it's going to be a lot more brighter, it's going to be a lot more sharper, and the saturation, which means the color intensity, is going to increase. Now, watch what happens when I increase the white all the way. The yellows become a lot more pronounced. You can see yellow, yellow. You can see this place is so bright. It's like you just pumped it with steroids. And that does not look good. I mean, have you seen guys that are... Oh, jeez. Don't do drugs, kids. <laughs> but anyway, for the white, um, usually it's good to increase this up to the point where you feel like it's getting too much. And I don't want you to start thinking of, okay, I'm going to be using um, what Lightroom feels is the best and stuff like that. Because at the end of the day, I'm just going to be like everybody else. I'm just going to want to get it right. The aim of editing a picture isn't to get it right. It's to get it the way you want to. So I'm going to increase this up to the point where I feel it's too much. Which means I'm going to have to go to when I don't like it. Start taking it away little by little. So, I feel like keep going. Let's keep going. Okay, I like it somewhere around here. And so I've increased the intensity of these bright areas some more, even more than highlights and exposure could. And let's do the same thing for the blacks. Now, this is what I was talking about. We increase shadows in this area, so now we have a lot more leeway to move our blacks. So if you want to make this darker, maybe you can bring this all the way down. But remember I said it's like giving this image steroids, it's like giving the dark part of your image steroids. Little steroids hurts nobody. So much steroids can kill. <laughs> so let's try to bring this just the point where we feel, yeah, it's dark enough. And I like it that way. Perfect. I think 11 is best. Now that is how you adjust these areas to improve the brightness of your image. We went from a dark mood. It's just so dark and a lot of parts you couldn't even see like this area here. You couldn't even see what was going on. But now everything is well exposed. The bright parts have detail, the dark parts have detail. We can even tell if I click on this, you can see that nothing is showing up. Usually, if the bright parts are overexposed and there is no detail there, you are going to be seeing red, 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 red. What happens if I increase the exposure? You can start seeing that red. But nope, well exposed. For the blacks, yes, we did lose detail, but remember what I said? I don't care if I lose detail in certain aspects of the image, as long as the entire image as a whole looks pleasing to me. So, I really don't mind as long as his eyes are in focus this place is in focus i mean you don't look at this image and straight away start looking at this particular spot no you look at his eyes i mean his hands are even swimming down that is what you want to get right and that's basically how you do that in lightroom now let's go even further and adjust uh what is called presence we have the clarity the haze vibrance and saturation now what's clarity so you know this meme where we have spider-man with his glasses on and it's like what people think i see and what i actually see <laughs> ah. basically clarity is like that dropping the clarity is like putting on glasses when you don't need it increasing clarity oh. increasing clarity is like it's just excellent, my goodness. That was probably a bad reference. <laughs> Basically, when you increase the clarity, it makes the image a lot more visible. It's 
accentuating the details in the image ah so grammar jesus basically if you increase the clarity all these little spots are being enhanced to the point that it is like he's taking all these little details and he's making them how was the word it's kind of like sharpness but if sharpness had a big brother sharpness does it little by little and it's a, but clarity is taking these dots all these dots all his the pores on his skin the pimples and everything and he's making it harsh not harsh per se but it's just basically bringing them out so we can see them a lot more if i increase this all the way we can see a lot of the detail on the skin he's enhancing the details so that we can see them visibly but if i reduce the clarity it's like butter <laughs> So usually for portraits, especially if I'm not going to be retouching it, I drop the clarity just a little bit to soften the skin. You can see what happens there. It's softening the skin. But then there are some images that, especially like black and white images. If any of you have seen all these black and white images of old people, maybe like street photography of some old man begging for money, they always boost the clarity to a point that it just looks so real, like and it works especially with hair the hair just looks so crisp it's almost like can I touch it? Can I touch it? Okay. <laughs> but that's basically up to you reducing it you see the effect it makes it soft it makes the image soft it tries to blend the image sort of in a way that the details are not so, so visible and then increasing it makes all the little details show up a lot more you can see his hair over here so what happens when i drop this i'm gonna increase it it's increasing the detail so for this image i want to drop this a little bit maybe to like minus four minus four is okay to soften the skin a little bit then the haze as the name implies gets rid of smoke but in this image there was no smoke and how does it get rid of smoke basically when you see smoke in an image, what am I saying smoke? <laughs> it could be fume, it could be gas, it could be anything, anything that is moving. It could actually even be that your lens was fogged up. Fog is what I said. Fog. F-O-G. <laughs> Basically, if your lens, maybe you put your lens near the AC or something like that. Like, why would you do that? Why would you do that to yourself? You could get cloudy your lens could get cloudy and when you take images they look a little bit blurry and this happens a lot especially with your phone lenses when you look at it and it's almost like you can see droplets of water it means moist has gotten into it and it can make your image blurry so what the haze does is it darkens the image so much so that that blurriness is gone because at the end of the day when an image has fog or haze or mist in it it's because the image becomes brighter than it's supposed to be so what the haze does is it darkens it in a way that it gets rid of that mist so you can actually get rid of mist if there was mist in this image i increase my haze the haze as we get rid it would get rid of it but you can also remove some of the dehaze you can also add some mist to it so what happens when i do this it's kind of like adding artificial mist if you will and i've seen a lot of friends use this to kind of create epic things so i i saw one guy who took a picture of a waterfall and he reduced the dehaze in certain aspects of the image and it looked like there was fog in that area i was really impressed but yeah let's take that back and but in this image there is no fog but we can use it creatively not everything is for correction sometimes you just want to play with it and create something interesting so i might i might just increase this gaze a little bit to kind of make it a little bit darker then vibrant i actually like the saturated images so i'm going to bring this down but the difference between vibrance and saturation is vibrance adjusts the intensity of colors but tries to protect the skin tone basically your orange your yellow tries to keep them natural out whereas saturation he does not try to keep anything natural at all. This guy is raw. He goes in for what he wants. If he says no color in this image, boom, black and white. 
no color. If it says I want everything to be intensified, everything will be oh this guy is just so rough. But vibrant, if I drop this to the bottom, it tries its best to save as you can see the door at the back still has color. His finger still have color. So he does it in a way that he protects the skin tone. Any color that is similar to skin tone to the computer, it will take it as we have to save this thing. We have to preserve this guy regardless of what. Which is why a lot of people, if they want to increase the saturation of their image, especially if there is if there are people in it, they are just the vibrant rather than saturation. So for this image, I might drop the vibrant just a little bit. And the reason why I'm using Vibrance once again is because it's protecting the skin tone, but it's also reducing the saturation of everything. We have saturation that have just dropped everything, both skin tone and everything. So reduce the Vibrance, save some skin tone, but also desaturate the image. Increasing it saturates the image, but also tries to keep the skin tone on a low, if you get what I mean. But saturation. It will bring everything down. Look at the door. It's also black now. Look at the Instagram self. There is no color showing up anymore. But if I just adjusted the vibrance, you can still see color. So that is the difference between saturation and vibrance. And majority of the sliders you just have to play with it. Like I remember it took me almost two months to figure out the difference between vibrance and saturation, even after watching tons of YouTube videos. So the best thing you could do is take a bunch of pictures and play the sliders. The major thing I try to make you guys understand is what they do. Once you know what they do and you play with them, you are going to be able to create amazing pieces. And this is just from the color. I'm sorry, from the exposure. We've not even gone to tone curve, HSL, all this stuff. We are just basically still in the basic panel. That's it, basic. This is the first uh, first step for most photographers when editing as these sliders over here. They use this one to get the image to look at, to get to get the image to a point where they feel okay, it's nice. Now I can stylize this image. Now I can turn this image into a piece of art. <laughs> so I'm going <clears throat> so I'm going to drop the vibrance a little bit more. I feel I like it at this point. Now the point we've not touched white balance very important but it's more or less towards the color which is why i didn't talk about it earlier but when you open an image in lightroom you have to adjust white balance first before you start playing with your color because your white balance is important what does white balance mean as simple as i can help you your white balance is basically the computer or the camera looking for which color signifies true white and which color signifies true black basically what i mean is if your camera is taking red for white your image will look like this <laughs> if your camera is not looking at colors well which is why it's called white balance you are trying to put tell your the camera is basically why is this on custom? Ah, sure. Okay. Okay. So basically, white balance, yeah, is what your camera sees color to be, and your camera can be wrong because under different lighting, colors change. I hope you understand. So orange might not always be orange. Orange in the morning might not be that same orange in the night. It might look different. It's still orange, you. But it might look different. Hopefully, you understand what I mean. So, white balance is basically your camera trying to say, okay, this is what white looks like. This is what black looks like. And if your camera is able to get what these colors look like and get it well, then every other color on your image will look well. But that is not always the case. Like, as you can see in this image, it looks like it looks off it does this does like if you look at this image it doesn't look like something you see in real life like the lighting looks weird and so for this and it was actually hot like it was warm so it's not even showing you how warm that place was see the white they don't look as it looks that day 
So that's another aspect you can look at it. You are trying to recreate how this image looked at that particular time when you are seeing it with your own actual eyes, and it looks hotter than this. If you watch movies, and you're, okay, let's talk of Game of Thrones and how cold that place looks. It looked cold because they literally adjusted the image to make it look cold. Now, this is just too much, but I hope you can get what I mean. If you are looking at some Mars or Martian movie, like the one I mentioned, the guy was here, so it's making hot. Basically, blue, colder, red, and the orange, hotter. But the aim is to try as much as possible to recreate how that image looks. At least that is to get the white balance to be correct. You want it to look like how it looked when you took the image. So it was warmer than this. So I'm going to drag the warm a little bit up. Then tint is basically the same thing as your temperature, but it's for greens and oranges. Sometimes your images might have a green tint to it. It could look like this. Or it could look like this. Especially if you are taking with different light sources, like if you take a picture with fluorescent light, your images might look purple and greenish. If you are using flash, your images might look very warm and stuff like that. <clears throat> if you are taking it on a cold day, your images might look colder than it's supposed to. Something like this. If you are taking it on a very hot day and you don't adjust it well. The images might look like this. Sorry. Let's say something like this. But the aim here, I'm trying to get this to look like how it looked like on the day I took the picture. Now, an easy way to do this is using the white balance selector. So you click on this and you have this tool here. And what you want to do is to look for gray. Because gray is that one color that no matter what happens to the light gray will always be gray which is why most photographers have gray cards with them they take a picture of that gray card and they match the white balance of the camera to the gray card so it's basically telling the camera okay take a picture of this gray card this gray card is gray obviously so that gray is the true color now use the color you gain from that to expose from other things Oh, I hope that makes sense. <laughs> even I don't even understand what I just said. Basically, you are going to look for spots that are grey or neutral colors. Sorry, did I say neutral? Neutral colors, basically. And it's going to try and make your white to be perfect white. As you can see now, this white area looks white. Like it, it looks white, like properly white. Come on, look at his eyes. Look at the before and after after it looks properly white now ordinarily i'd say i was wrong the image looked hotter than this when i took the image yes obviously but my eyes work different from the camera this has basically made the white to be actual white rather than you now trying to make it go warm or anything like that now what i'd say is once you've gotten a perfect white balance something where your whites are true white like as we have here, I and mean, look at the difference between this area here and now. This looks really white. So I'd say once you've gotten your image to look well exposed and the white balance is done well, you can now start playing with the sliders to get a look or a feel that you want. Like I said, this image was hotter than this. I mean, the area, this place was hotter than this. It looked warm because the sun was out. So I could drag this to this point to make it warm to match the vibe that I had that day somewhere around this. And I'm not joking guys, it was really hot this day. <laughs> then we could now play around with these ones as well. Bringing this here make it a lot pink, bringing it to this place make it a lot green. I want to have noticed is if you want your image to look warm bringing the temperature to the orange side and the tint to the green side actually kind of works but you could also play with the pink side like something like this and i feel this actually looks true to how it works sometimes you might not even need to touch the tint at all 
I'm going to make it a little bit greener. And I feel like this is how it looks that day, honestly. Warm. Warm like this. And that's basically that. Let's look at the before and the after. Like magic. And we've gotten this to a point where I feel it is properly exposed and the colors are gotten to how they want it to be. At this point, you can now start playing with your artoon curve, which I will talk about in another video. You can play with the colors. Basically, how do we want the oranges to look? How intense do we want the oranges to be? can go to our blue first blue cyan there is no much blue in this video so there's no point I just say it but basically that is what I'm saying that's the idea here the basic panel has been adjusted so that the image looks properly exposed everything looks as it should now you can now start shifting things around so that it doesn't look as it should but it looks as we want it to look and I hope you understand everything <laughs> that I've said. I'm pretty sure this video is going to be very long. But that's literally all I have time for today. That's how to edit your light, your exposure in Lightroom from an image that is either underexposed or overexposed. This can be applied to overexposed images. Like this image was underexposed, so it's too dark. So we try to bring it up. And things like that if it was overexposed this exposure we could probably bring it down like if it was something like this when we took the image dragging it down would have been better rather than increasing it to plus like we did and the same thing with highlights would have brought. sometimes your highlights could be so bright and so you have to drag it down sometimes you have to drag it down to minus 100 so but the idea here is if you can understand the concept between every slider here you'll be able to adjust it to match what you want like obviously exposure if something is bright already are you going to increase the brightness again no you will reduce the brightness same thing with your highlights and your shadows highlights and shadows are basically the exposure in the bright parts of the images or in the dark side of the images whites and blacks like i said just remember steroids guys honestly that's it remember steroids pumping steroids into your highlights into the bright parts of the images is what you get when you increase your whites but remember, too much steroid is bad, so it's always good to increase it just to the point where we feel we like it and we need it. And the same thing for blacks as well. The clarity, we talked about that, is basically taking the details on your skin and is making it intense so that we can see them very, very clearly. The haze is to get rid of haze, but we can also use it to add some darkness to the image. So increasing it makes it darker but reducing it makes it brighter but also kind of makes it sort of blurry and hazy for as the name implies vibrance adjusts the saturation while protecting the skin tone that saturation does not care this guy is raw whether skin tone is protected or not this guy does not care he will raise the intensity of the colors or drop everything to black and white this guy hardcore so be careful with him most often than not if you're adjusting a portrait i'll tell you to adjust the vibrance first if you can get it to where you want that's good but if you're adjusting vibrance and you're still not getting what you want then you can also adjust your saturation then we went to your white balance which was to try with two guy <laughs> which was what which was us trying to get the white to look like it should look white and the black and once we are able to get that, which was here, let's turn this to a snapshot so that we can always reference it when we are going back. White balance. So now, even if we go far, we can just click on snapshot and it will take us back to this place, which was here. So basically, we got this to a point where the white look white, like proper white, and the black look black, like proper black. And then we started adjusting it to make it look like how it looked the day we took the image. But sometimes you don't even need to make it look like how it looked the day we took the image. I've seen a lot of street photographers that just, if it is night and they want this image to look cold, and maybe somebody is wearing a jacket, they could just drop this thing to this place, make it blue, like make it really blue, 
sometimes they will even go to brush and start painting again in that area just to emphasize how cold it must have been that day. Oh my goodness, I've lost my. <laughs> I lost, oh my goodness, I lost the adjustments we've done. But anyhow, yeah, that's basically that. I think this is where we start with a little bit enough. But what I wanted for this image is to make it as warm as it looked that day. And I think I did it well by adjusting our temperature and our things after we got it to look good. Remember, guys, when editing, it is best. And it is safer to get your image properly exposed and looking as it should be like optimum get your whites to be white get your exposure to be done well so that there is no there is no part of the image that is not detail you can see his eyes you can even see the hair in this dark place everything is well lit aka well exposed meaning there is nothing that has lost detail and that is what you should try to get first. Once you've gotten that, they cannot start playing with this line and like dragging your shadows back, make it darker, even dragging the black a little bit, you know, drawing down your contrast or even increasing contrast, you know, increasing clarity, all these things. You cannot start adjusting all these different things to make it look the way you want it to look. Anyhow, that's all I have time for today. Thank you guys for watching and I hope, I really do hope you guys gained a lot today. If you have any questions, leave it in the comment section down below. I'll be sure to go through them and if there is a need for me to come back to redo this video, to pump out another one for you guys to understand, I will. Because I really want you guys to understand how to properly expose an image in Lightroom. I remember guys, this is the first video of a series and this is just the basic panel. Next video, we are going to be talking about the tone curve, which we can also use to adjust the exposure, which is this aspect here. You can see if you drag this, it makes it darker. And the reason why I use tone curve, because I, if you go to my presets, if I go to any of my presets here, you'd notice that all none of them have I adjusted the basic panel. Everything is done with the tone curve. You can see the thing. I even adjusted the colors using tone curve. And the reason behind this is because the tone curve gives you that professional look because you have the you can adjust whatever you want because everything is in dots look at this just drop points anywhere and adjust it accordingly and you can come up with some funky designs like guy what is this come on uh -uh. feeling me <laughs> but that was that's basically the idea you can come up with some interesting things here because we have so much so much power but we have to know that with great power comes great responsibility meaning you shouldn't go too crazy <laughs> with these things less is little in editing as it is with a lot of things in life thank you guys for watching if you enjoyed this video be sure to hit that like button if you really loved it and you want to see more Hit the subscribe button and hit the bell. I'll catch you all in the next video. Peace.